Hey, everybody, this is Dr. Maples. Thinking back to my time as an undergraduate student, I know the start of the semester is a brutal time. If you fall even the smallest bit behind or start on the wrong footing, the whole semester can just melt down too quickly. So what I want to do today is take my experience both as a student and as a professor and share six things that I think all students should do at the start of the semester to make sure the semester starts perfectly. We're going to go through each of them, and I'm going to give you some clear advice and examples of things that I want you to do so that your semester starts well. We've got a lot to do today, so uh, let's get started. All right, it may sound crazy, but the first thing I want to talk about is parking. Parking is one of the most engaged things you do as a college student because it's such a big part of your life, whether you're a commuter as I was or you live on campus. What I want to do is help develop a strategy to not only get you through those first couple of really super busy weeks on campus, but to also get you all the way through the special events, the legal paperwork, and more, get you through to the end of the semester. First thing I want you to do is look at the parking map for your campus, identify all the student parking lots in relation to your buildings and the library and any other spaces that you may use, such as a dorm. You wanna find the places that you can legally park and identify the ones that are closest to the spaces that you're gonna need. These are gonna be your primary parking spots and these are gonna be every day when you come in or you move your car, that's the first lot that you're gonna go to to try to find a parking space. But Things go badly, especially those first couple of weeks of the semester where it's just crazy and people are illegally parking all over the place. It's nuts. What we want to do is have some alternates in mind. Identify one or maybe two or even three lots that are maybe a little further out but are less likely to be used. Have these in mind. It's going to be great when there's some kind of special event on campus and you need to find an odd space to park. And those special events are really a huge thing for some parking lots. For me as a graduate student, most of my parking occurred right next to the arena where they had basketball games. And so when basketball was in season, it was always a conflict. I needed to have those alternate places to park. It's important to think about that. I also want you to spend some time at the start of every semester making sure in the campus system that your car is fully registered, you don't have any existing tickets, and that everything is good to go. Now, one thing that I need you to think about is that if for any reason you change your license plate, you have to update that in the system. Most campuses are now using license plate readers rather than parking tags, so they will drive through a parking lot and look for license plates that aren't identified to a particular car. Even if your VIN of your car is registered, you have to have the license plate attached to it. Otherwise, you get a ticket, you might get towed. Finally, if you haven't already done this, have a parking map, whether that's an app on your phone, that's a map that you've taken a picture of, or like it was for me back in the day, a good old-fashioned printed map. Do they even make those anymore that you can use to, on the fly, find a space that you can park? Next, I want to talk about mapping out your resources on campus. You know, an obvious piece of advice is that before the first day of classes, it's a great idea to swing by campus when things are quiet, look for your buildings if the buildings are unlocked, which they won't always be. You can go in and also find where your classrooms are. But something that I think is far more important is mapping out the resources that you're going to need to support yourself while you're going to classes and also studying to prepare for exams and so forth. Some of the things that are on my mind, where do I get food? Where do I get bagels? Where do I get vending machines? Because I got to have those like Snickers bars sometimes to keep me going. Where do I find coffee? Because I'm going to need a lot of coffee. And maybe if I've got too much caffeine in me, I'm probably going to need like tea to balance out the fact that I've just drunk six cups of coffee. Don't do that. It's bad for you. Nonetheless, I need to think about these kinds of resources that I'm going to need to support myself while I'm studying. There's also a couple of buildings on campus that I want you to think about. Where is the library? Where are my librarians in that library, including if you have a librarian assigned to your major, which you probably do. You can find that on the library website, by the way. And also, where's the gym? Most students pay for gym membership as part of their student fees, and they don't know that it's free. So if that's the case for you, which it probably is, you should be using that gym membership. Go swing by and use a treadmill or take a free yoga class, play some basketball, make some friends, swim some laps if you can, whatever it is that works for you to burn off all this extra stress that you're getting as part of being a college student. All right, so this one is coming straight from my time as a professor and also as a grad student. And this is the one 
one where you're probably going to be like, ah, next one, it's in like one minute. Don't skip this. This is so valuable, what I'm about to say. Get your syllabi on day one and hold on to your syllabi. You need to have these because they're so important. They are agreements between you and your professor of how this class is going to work. It's going to have all the stuff that you need to know about a class from when it meets to what classroom it uses, but also with the class policies. And in most syllabi, you will also see a schedule. You will see um, some kind of description of the activities that you'll be doing. There's going to be something about how you get a grade. These are going to be very important. What I suggest you do is every semester, get all of these, put them on your refrigerator, have them there, take pictures of the calendar in these syllabi if there is a calendar so you have it on your phone handy for easy reference, but keep them there on your refrigerator. Then at the end of the semester, I want you to actually put these in a box or a trapper keeper or a folder somewhere and hold on to them until you graduate. And if you're going to graduate school, hold on them until you at least finish up like your master's or maybe even your PhD because they're not taking up that much space, but these are super important documents. Likewise, if you're planning on transferring from a community college to another like four-year program, you want to hold on to these because you may actually be asked, what is the content of this class that you took? We don't have a direct transfer agreement with this community college, so we want to see the syllabus. And if you have the syllabus, you can show it to them and you can get that transfer credit. These are pure gold. You can also use them, though, to keep yourself on track because you know what to expect out of this class. You know when things are due. You know your deadlines. You know the assignments that you're going to have to do. So what you can actually do is use these to plan ahead the busy parts of the semester. So get them all together on the first day, put them on your fridge, store them at the end of the semester until you're done with college if you can, but make sure you have these handy because I guarantee you're going to have a question at some point in the semester and the professor is going to send you that dreaded email, go read the syllabus. Now, another thing that I want you to do to make sure your semester goes smoothly is that at the start of the semester, I want you to take some time and introduce yourself to your professor. Now, there's two ways that I want you to do this. First, about a week before campus starts up and classes begin, I want you to send your professor an email. I'm going to put the title of the class, the course number, and the section number, if you have it, in case there's multiple classes, in the subject line. And then you're going to send this brief email from your university email account. That's very important. Always write from your university account. And you're just going to say, hey, my name is blah, blah, blah. My major is blah, blah, blah. I'm really looking forward to your class and meeting you next week. That's all you got to say. Thanks, your name. Next, when the very first day of class happens, at the end of the class, not the start, but at the end of the class, I want you to just walk up and introduce yourself again and say, hey, I wrote you last week. My name is blah, blah, blah. Uh, just it's really great to meet you, and I'm looking forward to this class. And you, know, you can shake hands if you feel comfortable and it seems appropriate and the professor's into it or fist bumps. It's post-pandemic life, so we're figuring it all out, right? But you can introduce yourself here. And what that's going to do is twice, Put your name and also now your face in front of this professor. You're also going to be in their emails. And if you need something from them in the future, they're going to be able to search your email and be like, well, who is this person that's asking me for a favor in this class? Because now you're going to be in their system. I think it's going to make them a little more likely to help you because they're going to be like, oh, this is that student that said they were excited about my class. No one says that. So I'm going to help them out in this situation. I think it's a helpful thing because almost no one in the student world does this. You're going to have not really have any competition. Um, I will say sometimes professors are in a rush to get to their next class after the end of the class. So you might have to walk with them. But honestly, I think that's even better because if you take a couple of steps with them and, you know, kind of introduce yourself, I think it really even builds that mentor that relationship even more. And it can even help start mentorships. In fact, a couple of my mentorships started that way of me introducing myself to my professors and just walking with them and chatting afterwards. And it kind of ended up developing into close working relationships with some of these professors that would be part of my, you know, thesis and dissertation committees. All right, so here's one that was not on your radar, I can guarantee, but it's probably one of the most important ones on my list. At the start of every semester, and honestly, at the end of every semester, I want you to pull your transcripts. You can generally do this for free online. You log into your university system and you'll be able to access your transcripts. You can get with your student aid department or your student resources department or even a professor can tell you how to do this if you need help. But 
I want you to go in, I want you to check your list of classes and make sure that they line up with your plan to graduate. Things that you're looking for are all of my classes counting in the places that I and my advisor thought they were going to be counting. A big thing to look for is often at the very bottom of your transcript and looking for classes that do not count towards anything. If you are taking a class this semester or in past semesters that it's not counting against anything, we got to figure that out. There was either a problem with advising that you were told to take a class you didn't need, or this semester you're in a class that's either not counting in the right place or does not count at all. If you have a class that didn't list the correct way, get in touch with your advisor or a trusted professor, or if you don't know anyone, someone in that major that you have, or in general advising, find someone who can help you figure out why that class isn't listing correctly. And if you have a class that's like not going to be counting towards anything, don't take it. It's a waste of your time unless it's just a class that you want to take for the learning knowledge. Otherwise, if it's not going to count towards your major, don't take it. Take something else or take an easier semester, whatever you need to do. I want to finish up with advice that I have given more times than I can remember, whether that's to myself or my students, family members, the world. And it's the advice of Douglas Adams. It's don't panic. I can tell you from my time as a professor that, first off, your university is prepared for everything to go wrong in your life. Your professors are used to it. And on top of that, we know that this is a stressful experience. We expect things will go wrong. We are ready to deal with those. Your faculty have resources and knowledge and opportunities that will help you get through any problem that you can think of, right up to even withdrawing from campus for a time if you need that time away to be mentally and physically and spiritually and all those things healthy. On top of that, as a professor, I can say that I know universities are litigious. They are thinking about lawsuits. And one of the results of that is that universities are even more than ever prepared to help you with anything that can happen. If you have problems from in, like food insecurity to transportation to housing to anything that is a threat to your well-being, they can help. There's resources somewhere on campus that they can help with these issues. Likewise, build relationships with your professors. Call out to them when you need help. That's a big part of professors' jobs. Whatever's happening in your life, we can fix it. And on top of that, you got a question? Leave it in the comments. I mean, I'm happy to answer all sorts of questions. Even if it's not related to the video, I can often at least steer you in the right direction on your campus, tell you the people you maybe want to talk to, figure out what's got to happen. Don't panic. We can fix it. All right. That's everything for today. If you do all of these things, I promise you, your semester is going to be solid. It's going to start well. It's going to end well. And on top of that, we get enough of these semesters together. You're going to graduate well. Oh, I like that. I should make that into like a greeting card. We'll see y'all later. Take care.